Why do I feel like I look like Anne Hathaway from The Devil Wears Prada today? This. That's the look I'm going for today. You read the title in today's video. I'm going to be discussing the truth of studying psychology in South Africa. So whether you are watching this and live in South Africa or you are planning to move to South Africa and are thinking about studying psychology, this video is for you. Just a little disclaimer, this video in no way is meant to scare you off or discourage you from studying psychology. The whole purpose of this video is to help educate anyone who may be interested in studying psychology specifically in South Africa. I would appreciate so so much if you would give this video a like. It helps keep me informed on what content you guys like the most. Firstly, I want to say thank you so much to all the people who are subscribed to me. I appreciate you and your support more than you can ever imagine. And secondly, I've noticed almost 80% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. So please, please, please make sure to do that right now. I'll wait. And make sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my new uploads. With all that being said, let's get into the video. So firstly, I think it's important to shed some light on the different categories of registration within psychology. There are six, namely clinical, counseling, education, industrial, neuropsychology, and research psychology. So obviously, depending on what your interest or passion is, you would obviously register within one of these categories. I will also be mentioning something known as the HBCSA. Please do not get it confused with the SPCSA and I will explain what this is. So the HBCSA stands for the Health Professionals Council of South Africa and as it's mentioned in its name, it is a council that is responsible for guiding and regulating all health professionals in South Africa. They are involved and govern anything to do with registration, education, training, professional conduct, ethics and compliance when it comes to the healthcare standards. All of this information is available on a website called Cognition & Co. It's a website on literally anything psychology and how to become a specialist in any psychological field. I will link it in the description box below. Make sure to check it out. This website has literally everything you need to know about studying psychology in South Africa. And this website actually inspired me to make this video today. So if you want to be a professional psychologist in South Africa, you have to be registered with the HBCSA to actually be able to practice, counsel and earn a living. It is a very specific scope of psychology and the HBCSA oversees it. So what does the scope entail exactly? It is basically any rules, ethics and regulations to not only protect the client but also you as a psychologist in the professional environment. And this is very very important to avoid any misconduct. Another very interesting role that the HPCSA play is to oversee all the universities in South Africa to make sure the courses they offer specifically in psychology are up to standard when it comes to training and proper development. So if a university is not accredited with HBCSA, cannot teach young students who are interested in becoming psychologists in South Africa. So there are also many branches within psychology, namely counseling psychology, clinical psychology, educational psychology, industrial psychology, and research psychology. And I will be uploading a video in the future on the different branches or fields in psychology so make sure to look up for that one okay so now that we have the basis down let's go a little bit more in depth on the paths that you would need to go down in order to be able to practice as a professional psychologist in south africa now there are two paths that you can choose to go down they are very different but they all lead to the same destination so what exactly is path one you would enroll in a public university, such as maybe the University of Stellenbosch, do an undergraduate program to complete a course known as a B-Psych degree. This is a four-year course. The last time I checked, I think 
Stellenbosch does offer this course and I think it's actually the only university in the Western Cape that offers this course. I will link their website in the description box below if you are interested in going down the specific route. In this course, the practicum is included as long as you know you have the fees because it can be quite pricey. What exactly is path two? This path is also an undergraduate program, but this one you will need to complete a course known as BA or bachelor's degree. With this course, you would be majoring in psychology. So for example, you no know, BA or bachelor's would be maybe bachelor of arts, bachelor of science, bachelor of business administration, bachelor of social work. And all of these fall under the field of BA, health science, and social services. So I chose to go down this route, namely path two, through the University of South Africa, or better known as UNISA. Since UNISA offered undergraduate BA degree in psychology with a specialization in psychological counseling. So let's get a little bit more in depth on the steps within path one, what you will need to do if you choose to go down path one, namely the B psych course I mentioned, to becoming registered as a psychological practitioner. So the B psych undergraduate degree is probably the quickest and easiest approach since the practicum is all inclusive. So what would happen with this path is after completing this course, you would go straight from an undergraduate B psych degree straight into writing a national board exam and if you pass you can then register with HBCSA. So this is why I say this route is the easiest because you cut out the entire steps of separately having to complete your honours B psych equivalent program for which the practicum is separate. I will go a little bit more in depth on honours and B psych equivalent later on in the video. If we are talking the easier route B psych undergraduate degree definitely be the best choice but if you are obviously limited on funds which most of us are in this economy the longer route would probably be the best choice but this is just my opinion you know obviously depending on your situation and your finances you can choose whichever route is best for you i just want to mention because i think it's important to note <laughs> that the B psych undergraduate degree and the B-Psych equivalent program are two very different things. They are both vital in your journey towards becoming a psychological practitioner, but the process of each of them are very different. So when I talk about them respectively, please keep this in mind and try not to get confused. So I'm not going to be focusing too much on path one. I'm going to be focusing more on path two which is the path that I chose, namely the undergraduate BA degree at, you know, more specifically UNISA, which is a distance learning online university. And the reason that I'm going to be talking a little bit more in depth on the specific path is because I went down it and I'm speaking from experience. I'm using, you know, my personal experience to kind of show you what I went through, which you will probably go through too. I will also link the specific course that I did in the description box below if you are interested in the same part that I chose. So four years ago, I set out on my journey to become a psychological counsellor and it was all good. I had my plan all laid out. My initial plan, you know, when I started my studies was BA degree in psychology, honours in psychology complete practicum at any organization, you do my dissertation, write and pass national board exam, become a registered psychological counselor with the HPCSA, live happily ever after. But one day, my mom shared a website with me on Facebook called Cognition & Co, which I mentioned earlier and would highly recommend to check it out if you are interested in studying psychology in South Africa. And after speaking with a student counseling psychologist, he was so nice and explained everything, you know, so well to me. And I'm so grateful to have been able to come across him. 
But I did get a rude awakening when I was made aware of something known as the B-Psych equivalent, which I should have known about and actively done more research on. But I was so focused on my honors that I failed to look into it. My bad, we all make mistakes. What matters isn't the mistakes you've made, but how you choose to redeem yourself. So this is the exact reason why I am making this video today, to hopefully make the information, you know, that I didn't have a little bit more accessible to anyone watching that's interested in studying psychology in South Africa. So what exactly is the B-Psych equivalent program I keep talking about? This is a program you complete at an approved organization. I think the last time I checked, Cornerstone offers this program. I will leave a link in the description box where you complete a 720 hour practicum and an additional study course which will allow you to write the national board exam. I then realized that path two of completing a B-Psych equivalent program is not going to be an easy one. And on top of that, so, so, so pricey. I mean, I don't even know how they expect us to afford this in any capacity. I'm I'm talking close to maybe 108,000 Rand. I know, it's ridiculous. And I honestly believe education should be free, but let's not get into that. That's a whole other video for another day. So to say I was disappointed and I wish I had gone down of the B-Psych undergraduate degree in the first place would be an understatement. But since I was already on the road to my honors and I'd waited a year to be able to do it, I decided to forego the B-Psych equivalent program altogether and now rather work towards my masters. But if you are fortunate enough to be able to complete the B-Psych equivalent program, you can either register with the HBCA to become a psychological counsellor or a psychometrist. But what exactly is a psychometrist? I know it sounds <laughs> very intimidating, but a psychometrist is basically just an expert that performs psychological screening. In my previous video, I explained what screening is. I will link it in the description box as well as the top right corner over here so you can check it out. So what is the difference between a psychological counsellor and a psychometrist? A psychological counsellor is an expert in the field of psychology and they are allowed to counsel clients, whereas a psychometrist is an expert that is only allowed to perform psychological screening. So let's talk a little bit more about what the undergraduate BA degree entails. It is a three-year full-time study course where you are required to complete 360 credits over a period of three years according to SACWA or the South African Qualification Authority as per the NQF which is the National Qualifications Framework. This course does not however include any practical work. It is just academic. However, you will need to complete your honours in psychology, which is a one-year course. So alongside your undergraduate degree, it amounts to a four-year psychological qualification. So it will then be almost the same qualification as the undergraduate B-Psych degree that you would get from maybe the University of Stellenbosch. After you've obtained your four-year psychological qualification, you will then need to complete your B-Psych equivalent program, which includes a practicum and an additional academic course. So <laughs> you can see it's quite a long journey and a lot of work, but it will get you where you need to go nonetheless, so please don't be discouraged. Obviously, depending on the university that you attend, the subjects or the topics you may focus on within psychology include Basic psychology, personality psychology, developmental psychology, social psychology, health psychology, community psychology, abnormal psychology or psychopathology, neuropsychology, organizational psychology, psychological intervention, psychological research, and research methodology. So as you can see, there are so many different topics within psychology that it's almost impossible not to fall in love with the concept of psychology and its complexity. Now that we know a little bit more about the undergraduate BA degree, let's talk BA honors degree in psychology. 
So with reference to the honors program, there aren't any accredited programs in South Africa with the HBCSA. So if you obtain your honors, it doesn't mean that you can practice in psychological counseling or even psychometry yet. And that's a big yet. So please don't get discouraged. Just because it is not accredited doesn't mean that the honors degree is not legit or acknowledged. If you complete your honours, you can actually use this as a better advantage to apply for your masters. So if you think about it, having your honours actually more beneficial. SACWA does recognise the BA honours degree in psychology as an NQF level 8 qualification. And if you are wondering, this is exactly what I am doing at the moment. Nobody asks! And what exactly does this BA Honours program entail? You will be expected to build on your three-year undergraduate knowledge, as well as complete a research project where you as a student will get the opportunity to conduct your very own research on a specific psychological topic. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned the difference between quantitative and qualitative research and this research project you will be expected to do in your honors will give you the opportunity to actually immerse yourself in a qualitative research of your own which is very exciting the entire course just builds on your undergrad course and it prepares you for your master's degree if you choose to complete that too so just to give you a preview of the topics that you will cover in your ba honors course so you know what to expect there are topics such as abnormal psychology social psychology community psychology health psychology systemic psychology developmental psychology social research and psychological assessment so if this sounds in any way interesting to you, you should maybe consider doing the honours course in psychology after completing your BA undergraduate degree in psychology. But the choice is entirely up to you, it's your future. I will however leave a link in the description box below if you are interested. So as you can see, truth about studying psychology in South Africa, you know, is an ugly one, but it is also a rewarding one. Just like anything else in life, if you put the effort in, continue to work hard, despite all the trials and tribulations, you will reap the rewards in the end. So whether you choose to go down path one and finish your course all in one go, and then immediately into the board exam, or whether you choose to take the longer route, the longer path two, and do your undergraduate degree, honors degree, BSAC equivalent, and then finally the board exam, you will still reach your destination either way. And, you know, even if along the way you get discouraged with path two, just remember you have an honors degree under your belt and can go down an entirely new path or route, completing your master's in psychology. So there are no real dead ends. There's always another option. There are also so many other jobs and professions you can apply for with a psychology degree. I mean, just to name a few, human resources, recruitment, you know, community management. You could become a lecturer, a teacher, a student advisor, accounts, projects, developmental, or even a data's manager. Or you could even, you know, go down the route of sales and digital marketing, market research and promotions, and retail. I mean, you could even become a content creator. So as you can see, there are so many more professions and career paths you can venture down if the maybe traditional counseling or psychometric route seems too discouraging. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. Please give me a like, you would really be making my day. And I hope by now that you have subscribed or at least considered subscribing. And if you are still considering, you know, which path you want to go down on your journey, I hope I was able to make the decision process easier for you, that you're able to learn something and gain something of value. So I hope you have a nice day further. I hope you stay happy, healthy and safe. Always remember to give love, find value and see beauty in everything that you do. I'll see you in the next video. Much love. Bye.